<laughs> my name's Josh, and this is my dodgy T7 review. So uh, a long time viewers of the channel will know that this is not the first review I've done of the T7. I did a review when I'd had the bike for approximately three months. There's a link up in the corner here if you haven't seen that and you want to check it out. Uh, at this point now, it's a couple of weeks off 12 months that I've had the T7 and I now have over 12,000 kilometres on it. So of those 12,000 kilometres, it hasn't all just been riding to coffee shops. This bike's been used, I think, as it was intended to be used. Uh, there's a little bit of commuting, probably 5% popping down to the shop to get milk. The other 95% has been adventuring, doing single track like we're in now at the moment, uh, doing long weekend campouts, all that sort of stuff. So pretty much a good mix of riding for this old girl. The big question is, is this the magical unicorn that we've all been looking for in an adventure bike? Sadly to say, no, it's not. Obviously, most people know that already. It's still a 200 kilo plus bike, so it's a bit too much for a lot of people. But having said that, it definitely does have a lot of good points that outweigh that. So basically, in the first review I did of this bike, I went over all the things I'd added to it, the stuff I'd taken off of it up to that point. Since then, there's been a whole slew of other changes, nothing too major. But uh, I'll quickly list the stuff that I mentioned in the first video. The T7 Rally Seat Joining Kit. The Yamaha Alloy Radiator Guard. B&B Off-Road Engineering Bash Plate and Tail Tidy. The Unifilter Pre-Filter for the Airbox. The ATRC Billet Aluminium Airbox Lid. I removed the side stand switch. Added some Bark Busters. ODI Rogue Lock-On Grips. And of course the Nelson Rig Trails and Tank Bag. So that's all the stuff I had before guys. Since then I've added the following bits and pieces. Probably the most obvious change is the SRC upper crash bars. In the initial video I had only some Outback Motor Tech lower crash bars. Why did I change? I wasn't real happy with the way the Outback Motor Tech bars fit. I didn't feel like they were really well made. Anyway, SRC got in contact with me and offered me the upper crash bars to test out. They wanted to get their product out there. I said sure, I'll give them a try, chuck them on the T7 and 100% happy with just these uppers. They give you the same protection as the Outback Motortech lowers but also obviously a lot more protection up high and uh, I think paired with the awesome B&B off-road engineering bash plate, that thing is a beast, it gives the bike enough protection. Some other gear I got off SRC was the headlight protector. As I've mentioned before, these headlights cost about $1,200 Australian to replace. So put something over it, guys. If you follow another bikes or whatever, get a rock flick up and hit that. You're up for big bucks. The rear brake master cylinder cover, protective cover thing also comes from SRC. Same as the little ABS sensor cover. I also decided to change out the handlebars. Um, I've had experience with stock Yamaha bars in the past and they haven't been the strongest. Got these Pastrana FMX ATV Race, uh, just the Pro Taper Contour. They're slightly higher bend than the stock bars. Love them. Uh, the bike's been dropped a few times on these bars and uh, it's been fine. Plus, of course, they just look a little bit nicer in the black. Another addition I hadn't done in the last video was the exhaust. I said I wasn't going to bother with it, but of course that always changes when you have a new bike. Uh, you always want to get that better sound out of it, lose a bit of weight. The stock end can weighs over four kilos from memory. This little cheap eBay $60 end can and the CBX500 mid pipe cost me around about $120 
all together. There's a link up here, guys, if you want to see that uh, video on the exhaust. But um, yeah, it's still pretty much as it was. It did have that carbon fiber coating on the whole can, but um, as you can see on that end piece there, it, it goes all brown after a while from the heat. So I just um, took it off with a wire brush wheel and uh, sort of polished it up a little bit. But yeah, I love the sound of it. I also added these charge ports, just uh, a pair of USB charge ports. They're cheapies off eBay. I think that costs about $25 for that. Wired in pretty easily. You do have to pull a fair bit of the front of the bike apart to install it, to hook the wiring up and that, but there is a, a connector in behind here that you can wire it into. And that one actually does show your battery voltage. And uh, they are quick charge ports too, so pretty cool. Obviously in the first review video, I still had the stock Pirelli STR tires on. I ended up changing those out after about 7,000 kilometers. At the moment, I'm running the Golden Tire GT723s front and rear, but I'll go into tires a little bit more later on. I don't know if it's a common thing to all the T7s, but I found that my bike leaned over quite a lot on the kickstand to the point where I thought it was just leaning a little bit too far. And when I actually added the uh, knobbies onto the bike, it was it got even worse. So what I've ended up doing is putting a bit of an extension on the uh, bottom of the kickstand. So you can see that there. It's just two 10 mil pieces of aluminium hollowed out a bit to make them lightweight. I drilled and tapped a couple of holes in the kickstand itself. In hindsight, I should have made the bottom piece a little bit bigger so it didn't sink into the sand and dirt as much, but it works pretty well anyway. So a couple of other things I've added to the Yamaha chain guide, obviously a good thing to have off-road. And I also decided to spring for a lithium ion battery as well as being a hell of a lot lighter than a lead acid battery. They do last a hell of a lot longer as well. Just finally a couple more things guys, the double take adventure mirrors, uh, thanks to Tori Moto for supplying those to us, definitely would recommend those. And I also did the spark plug access mod, uh, if you guys haven't seen that, I did a video on it, there's a link up here as always, check it out, uh, makes accessing your spark plugs a heck of a lot easier if you happen to drown the bike or whatever and need to get the plugs out. So I think that's pretty much everything I've added to the bike uh, since the last video guys. Now we'll talk about what sucks about the T7. First thing I mentioned before, the weight. The weight of the bike, it's, it's heavy. Now when you're zipping along on the thing, it doesn't feel heavy. You can pretty well flick it around quite well. It handles really, really well. The weight really only comes into it when you're picking it up off the ground or you get it stuck somewhere in some mud or some sand or whatever now. I did get this thing stuck in a sandy creek bed not long ago in water. I got it out by myself. I was by myself, but I managed to get it out. Uh, it was a struggle. Um, obviously on a lighter, smaller bike, it wouldn't have been a problem at all. But uh, those are the sort of things that you've got to be aware of, especially if you're riding by yourself. When it comes to picking it up off the ground, I find it, actually, it's actually not too bad. I can manage quite easily as long as it's flat ground. Even if I've got my uh, camping luggage and stuff on it, it's, it's not too bad to pick it up. It's when your handlebars are facing down the hill. <laughs> that's, as with pretty much any bike, that's when it starts to be a real struggle. Just going to demonstrate picking the bike up off the ground, guys. It's on, it's not perfectly level ground, but it's, it's sort of level across that way. It's a bit of a slope down this way. But uh, I'll give you an idea of the uh, effort it takes. Now, I'm not a gym junkie bodybuilder. Pretty much my only exercise is editing videos. Drinking beer and riding this bike so uh yeah we'll show you how easy it is obviously that's not doing it the proper way lifting with your legs but uh just for that sort of situation picking it up normally is uh is is okay for me there you go. Yeah, that's the literal elephant in the room with this bike, the weight of it. If you can live with that, then, you know, all the other problems are, are pretty minor. So what are the other problems? Well, the exhaust mount is one thing that a lot of people have mentioned. Uh, it is a weak point on the bike. If you drop it on the right-hand side a bit too hard, you are going to bend that exhaust hanger and it is a part of the subframe. So. Uh, that can be a problem. I haven't had that problem yet. Uh, I don't know if that's just because I've been lucky. Um, I have dropped the bike 
on the right hand side at least three times that I can remember but I haven't bent any of that stuff yet. I think that smaller exhaust can probably helps a little bit. Um, it actually rotates inside its mount so it, that sort of yeah it allows it to move a little bit um, without bending that hanger straight up so now obviously an, a hard of enough hit it's just going to bend it anyway but yeah that little end can definitely having a little bit of flex in it does help another thing i mentioned in the first video was the rear brakes uh, i still i still feel that they're pretty shit they don't have a lot of feedback they don't have a lot of feel to them they just feel really spongy if i can compare it to my kdm exc when i push the brake pedal down it gets to a certain point and you can feel it engaging and you know that it's working with this it just feels spongy all the way down you can pretty much push it all the way down until it hits on the bash plate and you know there's just no feel of when it's engaging they do work obviously it's just it's just a, a minor thing they don't feel they're not as confidence inspiring i think as, as brakes that give you that feel of when they're when they're you know locking up I also mentioned about the twitchy throttle. I've gotten used to that. That's not really a problem anymore. A number of people suggested solutions, you know, adjusting the CO and all that sort of stuff. I haven't bothered with any of that. I've just gotten used to it. It is still twitchy, but you know, once you're used to it, it's not a problem. The other big thing for me is, is the bloody gearbox. Uh, I mentioned that it was clunky in the first video. I was hoping it, that it would wear in and get better, but it's, it's not. It's still a clunky gearbox. The gear changes are clunky, but you know, it is what it is. It's a typical Yamaha gearbox. Yeah, I'm really just trying to find things that aren't perfect about the bike. They're not deal breakers. None of that stuff would put me off buying this bike again. If I had to complain about one other thing, guys, it'd be the size of the fuel tank. I wish they'd managed to just, just expand it out to like 20 litres. That would have been perfect. 16 litres, like you get a great range out of that. You know, I can easily do 300, 350 k's out of a tank, depending on the... the terrain or whatever but just to have that little bit extra um, and that would have just been the perfect sweet spot but you know again nitpicking another thing i mentioned in the first video was the abs switch uh, having to turn that off every time you turn the engine off uh, what i've started doing now is um, if i want to stop for a, a quick break or whatever if it's just a short stop i'll just stall the engine in gear um, and that will uh, leave the abs off it also leaves the headlights and all the ignition and shit on as well so definitely not recommended for a long stop but uh, if you're stopping and starting a lot definitely a good idea to just let that clutch out let it stall um, the abs will stay off i mentioned how the suspension wasn't great in the first video too i haven't done anything to the suspension on mine i've just gotten used to riding it how it likes to be ridden sometimes yeah i am riding it right at the limit of what it can handle but you know once you know where that limit is it's fine and um, someone of my weight um, i'm around about 75 kilos add another 15 20 kilos with all the gear and camping gear and stuff on the bike let's just say um, i'm surprised at what it will handle obviously the big jumps and stuff you're going to bottom out it, it bottoms out hard too especially those forks if you push it too hard but like the, you can have a lot of fun on this bike um, with the stock suspension so if you you know if you really want to get stuck into some real fast uh whoops and and launching this bike you're going to need to spend money on the suspension as, as i said in the first video but for my use i'm perfectly happy with the way it is you got to play around with the clickers a bit i don't really know what i'm doing when it comes to clickers but um i've got it where i feel like it's it's pretty good at the moment so i'm pretty happy with that all right, so before we get into what I love about the bike, um, we'll go over the maintenance and stuff that I've had to do to it, which is not a lot. So aside from the initial 1,000 kilometer service, I've done all the work uh, myself on the bike. Changed the oil and filter at 5,000 and again at 10,000 kilometers. Oil changes on this bike, super easy. I wish all bikes were as easy as this to do oil changes. Once you take the bash plate off, uh, you've got one bung at the front here. The oil filter is right next to it. It's one of those round cartridge types. Drain the oil, change the filter, fill it up, off you go. There's no oil screens here and there and 14 different plugs you've got to undo to get all the oil out. Uh, just so easy. Uh, love it, easy maintenance. I replaced the rear brake pads at about 7,000 Ks. They still had a little bit of meat on them, but I wanted to try some, uh, some proper scented pads. Uh, I end up going with the new friend scented uh, rear brake pads. They seem to be lasting pretty well so far. I don't find them to be any better than the original pads, which sucked, but you know, they work and as long as they last pretty well, I'll be happy with that. As with all bikes I get, I ended up taking apart the swing arm 
and the linkage bearings and just making sure that they were um, all fully greased up. Yamaha are especially notorious for skimping on grease. So yeah, I did. it was worth doing that. A, a few of them were a bit dry. Uh, so all the linkage and swing arm bearings being greased. Same with the headset bearings. That actually wasn't too bad to do. Greased those up as well. I also changed out the spark plugs for some uh, NGK Iridium plugs uh, whilst I was doing that uh, spark plug access mod. I thought, well, I'm in there, I might as well change them. The original plugs had 10,000 Ks on them anyway. I know they only say to change them at 20,000, but I thought I'm just going to change them while I'm in there uh, with some Iridiums that should last 30 to 40,000 Ks. And aside from that, basically all I've done is cleaned the air filter when it needed it and changed the tyres when, uh, when they've worn out. Um, I have heard that the Cush hub bearing will probably need replacing at around about 15,000 kilometres, so I'll be keeping an eye on that and the wheel bearings, but so far all good. The chain and sprockets, as I mentioned in an earlier video, we only use silicon spray on the chain and sprockets. You know, I'm up to 12,300 kilometres and they're still fine. The chain isn't stretching heaps. Um, in fact, I haven't adjusted it in probably the last 5,000 Ks. It's been really good. The front sprocket's getting a tiny bit of wear on it, but I think that chain and sprockets will probably get, get me to 20,000 Ks, no worries, um, if it keeps going as it has been. Pretty much haven't damaged anything on the bike from dropping it. The SRC crash bars have uh, done their job wonderfully. And of course, the Bark Buster handguards, they probably take the brunt of uh, most of my drops. Um, I've had to re-bend those back into their proper shape a few times, but... Um, they're still hanging in there. You know, that's what they're there for. They stop everything else getting broken, so that's cool. All right, getting back to the tires, guys. Uh, as I said, I took off the STRs at about 7,000 Ks. I was really keen to get some knobbies on there. Uh, what I had at the time at home was a Golden Tire GT2 on 6 AA front. It's a full-on enduro tire, really widely spaced knobs. Um, I wasn't expecting to get many Ks out of it uh, on the big girl. Um, and I didn't um, end up getting about 4,000 Ks out of that front. But um, oh, it's so good in the dirt with uh, an enduro tire on the front. If you can afford to keep replacing them every 4,000 Ks, then definitely well worth having them on there because they're so good. All right on the road when you get used to them, but yeah, not the best on the road. Under heavy braking, scary. At the same time, I put the golden tire on there. I put uh, Motos Tractionator Adventure Rels on the rear. Just the 140. I got about 5,000 Ks out of the rails rear. Um, I was pretty happy with that tyre, it was okay. Now obviously I've got the Golden Tyre GT723s front and rear. They're going super great, I love these tyres. Um, the front is just awesome. The rear hooks up great. Um, I'm running about 18 PSI in the rear, seems to be fine, no rim damage yet. And in the front about 25 PSI, so that's the combo I'm going to stick with for a while now the GT723s. Yeah, great tyres. They are a really high profile tyre, the front ones. So they, you know, you don't have a lot of clearance here between the tyre and, and that low guard, even when it's at its highest setting. So we're pretty lucky around here. We don't have a lot of mud most of the time. It's usually pretty dry, but I think if I get into some serious clag, um, that's going to be a bit of a problem with that low guard. Um, I haven't gone with a, a center stand on the bike. Uh, I haven't had to change a flat tire or anything on the trails yet, uh, thankfully. I'm not a big fan of the center stands. I see those things flopping around on people's bikes. I know they are heavy, but the weight is low down. But yeah, I, I just, I'm not interested in putting something like that on this bike. I do have one of those modified crutches that uh, I can easily get the back wheel off the ground. I can lift the front off the ground as well uh, by putting it underneath the bash plate. It's not easy, but uh, it does work. I've tried it. So that's probably enough to get me out of trouble most of the time if I need to fix a flat tire or whatever. The B&B bash plate's holding up really well. Um, it's probably one of the best things I've put on this bike. I knew as soon as I saw the B&B bash plate that I'd, I'd be getting one of those for it. That 5mm alloy plate is just awesome. They look good. They got really good protection. These little wings here help protect your water pump. Um, and your ignition cover on the other side. Um, just super, super tough. I jack this bike up underneath uh, all the time, just on the bash plate. Uh, it's fine. So what else could I tell you about this bike? Why, why do I enjoy riding it so much? How is it that someone who loved riding their KDM 500 EXC every weekend suddenly go to preferring something like this? In the 12 months I've had this bike, the KDM has been out three times that I can remember three times and we ride most weekends so uh, that says a lot about how much I enjoy this bike. If I'm honest a lot of it comes down to laziness because 
we don't have to trailer this bike um, the exc is obviously very uncomfortable on the road if you want to go out to the trails you've got to load them up you got to gear up you can't carry your stuff on the bike like i just love to i can just jump on this bike i can throw some water i can throw my drone in the tank bag um, i've got my tools on the back seat there there's no hassles with it you know i throw my clothes on at home off a toddle you know i'm gone i'm out the door i'm into the bush i can go wherever i want you know if it's 100 k's on the bitching and before i get to the dirt who cares you know this thing is so nice on the road as well as off and then you get into the single track lock here and it's just as much fun as a 500 xc in fact i find it to be more fun because it's a little bit more of a challenge it's it's a big wallowy thing but it's just it's so comfortable to sit on you know it's hard to explain but yeah i'm just i'm really wrapped with this bike i love it if i had to get rid of the exc or this tomorrow hands down the exc would be gone i know that's uh, going to be a surprise and a bit of a disappointment to long-term viewers of this channel but you know adventure riding we used to poke fun at adventure riders too when we were riding this the little dirt bikes but man it's just one of those things you got to try it before you can knock it you know uh, it's it's a bunch of fun you know this bike this bike will take us to the cape if we want to go to the cape out to the fucking desert if we want to go to the desert uh three single tracks like this no worries it's a bit sketchy on the big hairy hill climbs but you know it's just a super fun capable machine uh what we might do now is jump on the bike ride some of these trails uh have a bit of fun on it and um get the old girl doing what she loves to do and uh what i love to do as well all right a bit of single track here A little bit of a climb up through here. It's uh, quite steep country in here. May not look like it on the uh, camera, but it, uh, it is indeed. I actually tried to go up this hill last time I was here and dropped it about halfway up. <laughs> Pretty steep and ruddy this one, but um, it's doable. Not a lot of run up. Wasn't ideal, but <laughs> up is up. <laughs> that was sketchy. A nice little single track through here. Quite steep on the downside. Might 
one thing you definitely want um, on a bike like this is a decent knobby front tire I think um, because obviously with all that weight behind it coming downhill can be can be tricky to pull it up sometimes and the last thing you want to be doing is uh, going off track when it's steep and then trying to get the thing out again <laughs> Anyway guys, I don't know if uh, I've really given you any new information that you haven't already seen a thousand times in all the other reviews uh, of this bike on YouTube. But you never know, maybe it's uh, helped someone out, uh, maybe swayed you towards buying this bike or not buying this bike, whatever the case may be. I definitely recommend you test ride one, um, feel the weight of it. If you think it's something that you could handle, then uh, you know, I'd have no hesitation to recommend you buy it. Uh, it's, it's a great bike. One thing I didn't mention in this video yet is the look of the bike. I mean, look at it. Uh, it's sex on wheels you know when it comes to off-road motorcycles it don't get much better looking than that just give you a minute to enjoy it Anyway, if you've made it uh, this far into the video, guys, thanks for watching. Um, please, if you enjoyed this video or got something out of it, hit the little like button. It does help our channel. Uh, if you want to see more videos on the T7, obviously hit that subscribe button as well. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Drinking beer. And so other pretty much nothing else nothing on the nothing else on the bikes. Oh, fuck up. bearing uh, will probably be uh, needing to be replaced or starting to fuck <laughs> uh, bearing should be probably getting close should be